a strike and a dip is that you've got to convince yourself that you are dealing with layering yeah um, and the way that you do that is that you need to go round at 90 degrees you remember we did this in class to the inclined plane to see that yes we've got layering here right okay there's layering there and there's layering here you follow it around so you know that you're dealing with inclined planes and i think i said in the class before that i went through my degree not really understanding what what bedding was it's only we started kind of like really reading about it. i thought hang on a minute it's this change in brain science or change in environment of deposition change in chemistry if you like we've already seen this with the green and the red, yeah? It's changing in chemistry or changing the environment deposition or energy regime as well. That will give you a change in brain size and your eye picks that out of bedding. So what we've got to do, remember the first thing we've got to do? We need to establish something first. Yeah. Um, that, can you remember the name of what we've got to establish? It's the strike. We have to establish the strike first. Now strike is horizontal, yeah? So using a separate one, I always use this, but I'll show you how to use it with just this in a minute, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, after I put my glasses on, Alison, this is another part of it, getting old. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, they told me, <laughs> but I'm two months older than you. Yeah. Okay, so let's get this, and notice that this is kind of this plane it's not dead flat, but it's good enough to do it on. If you wanted it absolutely dead flat, you could put a mapping board or a field notebook on it and draw on your field notebook, but you end up with hundreds of lines on your field notebook. So um, You don't actually need to draw on the rock, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'll, I'll show you. So there's the north. Okay, this is where I've established the story. Um, if I did it on another plane here, it's parallel, so strike is merely a horizontal on the rock. Uh, and whatever height on that rock you, you, you do, it, the strike will be a horizontal, a horizontal line. And this line, obviously, if we use the compass, one end is one degree reading, the other end is going to be 180 degree difference. So we need to have consistency. So at Birkbeck we use this right hand rule. And the right hand rule is that the right hand index finger is placed down dip like so and the direction that your right thumb is pointing in this end of the line here so i'll just mark that this end of the line here that is the azimuth that we want to record and that will give us our strike yeah so what we do is that we get your the, the compass and make sure that the compass is horizontal to the rock because you'll see that the actual needle itself which it should be, will move if you hold it down by the rock so you've got to make it horizontal and then you rotate the bezel so you rotate the bezel to the red arrow the red floating arrow is directly above the red arrow on the bezel and the compass, this is in two degree increments, you read this off. And this is the strike, 090, 090, yeah? And then the way I do it is that you bring up your compass, the mirror on your compass like so, and uh, this, you make a natural 90 degrees. And now I've lost my clean on. Ah, thanks, I've got it here. And then what you do is that you can place your clinometer like so, and where the ball bearing is, which in this case is 40, you can read off the amount of maximum dip. This is known as the true dip, maximum dip. So the strike here is 090 slash 40. So we put a three figure number in, which is 090, that's the strike, slash 40, that is the dip. Now that is using both of these <coughs> pieces of equipment. And if you're doing your individual mapping, I, I would advise you to use these the two because I find it a lot quicker. If we're using the one piece of equipment, this is where my eyesight comes in badly here, you'll see 